Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is Digital 2 EET 122. Today we are going to discuss the 555 timer and using it as a one-shot device. We have previously discussed some special purpose one-shot devices, but the 555 timer uh, is more of a general purpose device and it can be configured as a one-shot also. So, uh, first off, what's inside a 555 timer? So, first off, think of three, two, one, 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 and bonus. Okay? Three. There's three identical 5K resistors. And you know from ET111 voltage divider rule, regardless of what this voltage is here, if there's three identical resistors, they should each have a third of VCCC drop across them. Just so happens, that's plus five there, and these are all 5K ohm resistors. Doesn't really even matter what they are, as long as they're identical. You would expect 3.3 volts here, and you would expect 1.67 volts there. All it is is just a means of dividing up the uh, up the uh, the voltage equally. Two comparators. Now these are voltage comparators, not the binary number comparators that we have been discussing previously. Um, Voltage comparators, which you may have seen already inside uh, ET221, probably. Um, these are different than the binary number comparators. Um, basically, there's a plus and a minus input and a single output on a voltage comparator. Well, you would think normally a plus should be higher than a minus. That's going to output a 1. But if your minus input is higher than your plus, it's going to output a zero. So two voltage comparators. How are they hooked up? Comparator A, its minus is right here. We already know the values, so I'm going to give them their names. And this is called threshold. Oops, sorry. <laughs> That's a negative input positive input for comparator A. Comparator A is the threshold. Uh, comparator B excuse me, it's positive. And this right here is the trigger. So what does this mean? Well, for comparator A, anytime threshold is greater than, as we previously discussed, 3.3 volts, it's going to produce a 1. Anytime threshold is lower than 3.3 volts, it's going to produce a 0. B, from the perspective of B, anytime trigger is less than 1.67 volts, it's going to produce a 1. Anytime it's higher, anytime trigger is higher than 1.67 volts, excuse me, anytime, uh, 1 .6, anytime trigger is lower than 1.67 volts, comparator B is going to output a 1. Okay? The one. What's the one? It's one SR latch, but it's hooked up upside down. SR. And we're taking not Q. Not Q. I don't know if you get that joke. We're taking not Q. Not Q. I don't know if you're laughing or not, but I think that's pretty funny. Okay, what's the other thing that we've got here? One discharge uh, capacitor, not capacitor, transistor. One discharge transistor. 
and it is hooked up to not Q. Its base here, here is hooked up to not Q. So that's our transistor. And the final one, what is it? It's an inverting buffer. All it takes is not Q, inverts it, and what's output here is Q. Okay, so let's talk about the discharge capacitor, oh, excuse me, transistor, before we get going here. If you've not had uh, EET-221, just think of transistor as a switch, okay? And a zero, this is the switch end, this portion of it, a zero is going to turn it off. So if we could redraw this thing. And this discharge the transistor could be drawn like this. If there's a zero here, it could easily be drawn like this. Basically, an open switch. But if there's a one on the base, what happens is that switch closes down and becomes a discharge path for whatever is hooked up to the discharge uh, pin here. And pretty obviously, it's going to be a capacitor. Okay, so anytime there's a one, it closes the switch. Anytime it's a zero, it opens the switch. Okay, bonus features we'll talk about later. Bonus is just a means of uh, adjusting the control voltages. Um, and threshold and trigger and stuff. OK, we'll go back to those later. OK, so how do we set this guy up, the 555, as the one-shot device? Well, let's redraw this thing nice and pretty. OK, here's our nice and pretty diagram. But it's still confusing because of these three resistors here. We already know, remember, that's 1.67. And that's 3.3 volts regardless. Uh, when we get to bonus features, yeah, it's going to change. But let's just simplify the diagram, and that's actually just get rid of those resistors and keep those values. OK, so now what are our inputs again? Well, first off is our trigger, and that's our normally high trigger. And then we've got our threshold. And we've got our discharge. OK, to set it up for a uh, monostable multivibrator, i.e. a one-shot, all you're going to do is just hook up a capacitor and a resistor. And the magnitude of the resistor and capacitor obviously affects the time constant of this device and thereby the pulse width. OK, so let's go ahead and hook those guys up. First one, just take your capacitor, hook it across from your discharge to ground, tie your threshold together with your discharge. And then you're going to put another resistor external again. And that's going to go to plus 5 volts. And that's our one. OK? So before we've received any trigger command here, um, the output is normally low. And it's just going to hang out there. And if this is low right here, this is one. And remember, one right here turns the discharge capacitor on. It's like a switch that's just right to ground. What's happening here is it's keeping um, no current going into the capacitor. Because remember, here's plus five up here. And all that current is going to want to go in through that resistor. And it's going to get to this point here. It's got a decision to make. Should I go through an open circuit capacitor? Or should I go through this easy path to ground right here? And it's just going to stay that way until a low trigger comes along. And what does the low trigger have to be lower than? It has to be lower than 1.67 volts in this particular circumstance here in order for the output of comparator B to change. So when that goes lower, so let's say 
it was active high it was high for a long time we've given it a low pulse right here this thing has gone below 1.67 volts so this changes to a one and we set the latch things start changing here so once we set the latch q which was up here because we're taking not q q goes to one and not q goes to zero which if we remember right talking about our transistors earlier has opened this switch and that easy discharge path is no longer there and this capacitor starts charging up through resistor one into the capacitor hence the time constant tau equals r1 times c1 well, in actuality there's a little bit of a fudge factor for a uh, 555 the pulse width is 1.1 times r1 c1 okay so now what happens once this thing is charged up to 5 volts well plus 5 on that side ground on this side what's across the resistor well it's plus 5 on one side plus 5 on the other the current ceases and because that is hooked up to the threshold here plus 5 it's basically gone plus 5 here the output here goes high and it resets the latch 0 1 and turning our discharge capacitor back on because previously it was charged up to 5 volts discharges through this easy path to ground but in the actuality what we're looking for here is it's returned back to its natural state of zero okay the inner workings of this thing it's not especially complicated but uh, it's pretty ingenious means of uh, making it automatically return back to its natural stable state and again what determines it is this right here that ratio of the resistor not ratio excuse me the multiplication r1 c1 times 1.1 for the pulse width there are a couple uh, bonus features that do need to be uh, discussed uh, first of which is the control and in this particular application the control is hooked up to a decoupling capacitor and that's that little tiny capacitor that you guys have been using in lab uh, it's like the, it was 0 0.01 microfarads um, that control can actually be used to adjust the triggering to different levels too not at 3.3 or 1.67 uh, excuse me uh, threshold and trigger because threshold 3.3 triggers 1.67 you could change it to other values too um, I don't know um, put like a 10 volts 10 volt thing there and you would expect uh, I don't know, you'd have to have you'd have to have the logic value reach a 10 before it would come back so yeah don't do it for this particular example and this as a one-shot device you want it to be decoupled so it's five volts okay so um, excuse me decoupled don't add a control voltage for a one-shot okay so as we had uh, discussed earlier our discharge and threshold those guys are tied together and we're going to go ahead and put our capacitor C1 there. That's our external capacitor. And here's our R1. And we're going to tie that to plus 5. Our trigger, normally high, we just give it an active low. And it should give us our pulse right there, our one-shot pulse, with the pulse width determined by... 1.1 r1 c1 okay uh, there's a couple other bonus features an active low reset you can just give it a zero and it'll reset the whole thing obviously you've got to go ahead and power it up here with vcc
a bunch of other applications for the 555, which we will see in a little bit when we set up as an oscillator.